Hi, welcome back to another session of Cognify GMAT. And my goal is to help you as your DIY study guide for the GMAT. So you've decided to study the GMAT and borrow an official guide. And you ask, now what? You've come to the right place. Let's begin. If you ask, is it okay to have the patch edition of the officer guide? The answer is yes, it's totally fine to have the patch versions of the officer guide, whether they are the main OG books or the verbal or quant review OG books. But if you haven't bought an officer guide books yet, I strongly recommend you buy one. They only cost $77.85 for a paperback if you buy the 3 book bundle from Amazon and $81.95 for ebook if you buy them from Wiley Efficient Learning website. Both have exactly the same content and the only difference is for ebooks you will get the products right away but paperback of course you need to wait a little to get them delivered to your door. Another popular question I get all the time is should I buy the current version of the 2021 OG? Or is it fine to buy the packed editions? If you are buying a new book, I would say definitely go for the OG 2021. Things changed quite a bit for the new version of the 2021 and the newly introduced features will help you to get the most out of the books. For example, there was a diagonal touch in the official guide in the beginning of the book for the past decade. But it was kind of useless because the question was so difficult considering it was only an introductory level. I mean, you don't know the text format and the there are really hard level questions like around 700 level in the diagonal test. The GMA finally decided to scrap the diagonal test, which I think is good, and put them under the new category of online question bank. Okay, so what should you do after you buy the officer guide books? The first step you should do is figure out what is covered in the GMAT. Refer to the math review section of the book. You don't need to read carefully everything in math review. There's no need to peruse it. The purpose is to get the overall idea of what is covered in the GMAT quant. I put a PDF file in the description below so you can download it and easily view the subtopics of every GMAT quantum material. Now for the verbal part, there's not much to read in the officer guide. Perhaps you can quickly check out the basic English grammar rules section in sentence correction. But other than that, it's better to check out articles done by prep companies. Again, check the description below for amazing articles for introductory verbal reasoning. I've also done a video on everything you need to know about the GMAT prep and it will help you to get an overall idea. So, after you got the basic idea of what is covered in the GMAT, solve the questions right away. How to solve a GMAT question? Whether you buy the paperbacks or ebooks, we need to have a separate piece of paper. Buy a legal pad that is ruled with lined and yellow colored. You can easily buy them in Amazon for $13. And I cannot emphasize how important it is to buy the scratch pad for studying the GMAT because you will be given laminated lined yellow legal pad in the test center on the actual exam day. So you need to make it a habit to write down the notepad to emulate the test environment. By the way, when writing on the scratch pad, don't use a pencil and an eraser. Get used to using pens or markers because on the test day, you'll be provided with a non-permanent marker. Okay, so after getting a scratch pad and a marker, now prepare an error log. This step is another essential measure you need to take. So how do you keep an error log? You can have a small binder or diary like a notebook and take note of the questions you need to review later. I recommend you divide the question types into three parts. One, daily mistakes. Two, difficult questions. And three, not so confident questions. However, many students avoid revisiting silly mistakes, but trust me, you definitely need to revisit them and get it 100% right, even if it seems like the easiest question in the GMAT. Reducing the silly mistakes will easily boost your score beyond the 600 level. The second category of taking note of difficult questions is not that hard, but you also need to write down the questions you want to review even if you got it correct. The third part is for revisiting problems that you want to get 100% confident with the concept. If you got questions by lucky guess or by eliminating method and did not understand the solid concept behind it, you definitely need to review these questions. One good thing about the 
alphabetical guide if they all questions are numbered differently throughout the book. There is no repeating number for the question, so you can conveniently write down the question number in the error log. Just be careful not to mix up question numbers from quant within review or verbal within review books with the main alphabetical guide book. You might ask, when do you revisit the error log? Revisit them after 2-3 to three days but no later than a week. Don't review the question the next day because you still are familiar with the context of the question. Between 2 days and 7 days, you have forgotten the familiarity of the question context. And if you can solve the question confidently when revisiting it, you are good to go. Mark the question you got correct confidently and eliminate them from the error log. If you got certain questions wrong again, however, make sure you mark the number of times you got the question wrong. If you have the same problem wrong three times in a row, especially mark the question like a hall of shame. <laughs> I mean Hall of Fame question you want to review. Be honest with your current problem solving level, and you will see a tremendous improvement with this error log strategy. As you solve questions in the official guide, make sure to visit the Wiley Efficient Learning website and browse it through the flashcards. These are nice pieces of information to review the GMAT concepts, and they are kind of laid out randomly, so it helps you to review the concepts solid. There are a total of 163 flashcards with 119 quant topics and 44 verbal topics. The default estimated time to review each flashcard is set as 2 minutes, but that's too long. If you take less than a minute to review each card. You can set the amount of flashcards you want to review. And when you create a deck, it will begin showing the flashcards. You can flip the flashcard to see the answer for each simple question or explanation of a definition. But really, you should decide what to memorize. For example, you don't need to memorize the term distributive law. I mean, as long as you can recognize the algebraic formula for A multiplied by B plus C, you don't need to memorize the naming of it. The same thing is for the flashcard asking for the product of a sum and the difference. The GMAT does not ask questions like that, it's only a basic concept. So to memorize the formula for multiplying x minus y by x plus y, which will lead to x square minus y square. Of course, you need to memorize certain terms like equilateral triangle because the term appears frequently in the GMAT question. That's why you need to decide which definition you need to memorize and which you don't need to. Some require memorizing definitions and some require knowing formulae. I personally like the verbal part of the flat card. They are like a simplified version of a sentence correction with only two options or simple Simplify the critical reasoning concept. I strongly recommend you overview all 44 verbal flashcards. Also, take note that you can view the unseen flashcards later, so make use of this convenient feature. You can also use your smartphone to download the Gmail app and view the flashcard on iPhones or Android phones. Actually, the app is better designed than the website version. You can gain access to the same content on your smartphone using the app, and the flashcards look good here as well. Of course, to emulate the text environment, it's better to view the questions on the website, but for flashcards, you can use the smartphone app also. Try to review the concept as often as you can, and you'll be good to go. So, the take-home messages are, it's better to buy the official guide books rather than to borrow because you can gain access to online websites, and it's the best if you can buy the latest 2021 official guide books. Get familiar with the topics of the GMAT, and utilize a yellow legal notepad and a marker. Make sure to use the error log and revisit the problem to 2 to 7 days after you incorrectly solve the problems. Lastly but importantly, use the new feature of the flashcards that come with the latest official guide 2021. I hope this video was helpful to boost your start of the GMAT journey and smash the like button POW and subscribe to this amazing channel. Good luck with studying for the GMAT. And smash the like button and smash the like button POW and smash the like button POW.